In this video, we're going to go over the top 10 skill shots that you may not know. These are shots that will come up in 8-ball or 9-ball, and once you learn them, will help you win more games. I'm also going to show you a few bonus shots that are easy to learn, but extremely powerful. And I'll show you the recent shot Mike Massey discovered while practicing at a friend's house. If you're interested in learning more skill shots, check out Mike Massey's 50 shots every serious player needs to know, which also comes with several bonus shots. I'll put a link in the description. And for more instructional videos, you can join the Zero X Patreon page where we have hours and hours of instructional videos covering all aspects of the game. And we also have 8-Ball Puzzles where we give away prizes every week. Everything from a Revo shaft, to pool accessories, to autographs. I'll put a link to our Patreon page in the description. So if you're ready, let's get started. In this first shot, we're playing 9-ball, we need to pocket the 1-ball and play shape for the 2-ball in this area here. The problem is that we ended up on the wrong side of the pocket line, and if we use high left on this shot, it won't take the cue ball toward our position area. But if we shoot with high left again, this time we're going to elevate our cue stick, which causes the cue ball to hop slightly when it strikes the 1-ball, changing its path and sending it toward our target. This shot comes up quite often, so it's a shot you definitely need to learn. Here's another example where we ended up on the wrong side of the pocket line. In this game of 8-ball, I'm shooting my last stripe and I'm going to send the cue ball to this area here for shaping the 8-ball. If I just use high left, the cue ball is sent in this direction. But if I slightly elevate the cue stick, now the cue ball's path changes, sending it toward our position area. When using high left, this is the path the cue ball takes toward the cushion. When we slightly elevate the cue stick, the cue ball's path is sent further out before striking the cushion, which allows it to be sent further down the table. The key on this shot is to make sure you really follow through when striking the cue ball. Here's another variation of this type of shot. In this game of 9-ball, we need to land over here for the 2-ball, but we don't have the angle to send the cue ball toward this area. So, just like in the previous shot, we're going to elevate our cue stick and strike the cue ball with high left. Since there is less angle in the 1-ball, the cue ball is going to strike the side rail on the other side of the side pocket, which sends it over to the end rail for shape on the 2-ball. In this shot we're playing 8-ball, we need to send the cue ball around the 8-ball so we can play it in the bottom right corner pocket. If we use high left in this shot, we'll probably strike the 8-ball. But if we strike the cue ball center with maximum left spin, the cue ball will move around the 8-ball. When performing the shot, you need to push the tip as far left as possible. The grip pressure is going to be extremely light. This is a finesse shot, so it doesn't require much of a stroke. Now, even at this angle, we can still manage to get to the other side of the 8-ball. Here's another example of just using center with maximum side spin. In this game of 9-ball, I need to send the cue ball two rails toward the bottom side rail for shape on the 4-ball. So in this shot, I'm going to be using center with maximum right. And what's great about these shots is that the side spin helps move the cue ball once it strikes the cushion. So you don't need to power up the cue ball. Just a nice stroke with good follow through. In this last example, we're playing 8 ball, we ended up here on our last solid. The goal is to land over here so we can shoot the 8 ball in the top right corner pocket. If we use high right, the cue ball will be sent in this direction. But if we shoot with center and maximum right, the cue ball's path really widens once it strikes the cushion, sending it toward our position area. When playing pool, you'll sometimes end up with this situation here. In this game of 8-ball, I need to pocket my last stripe and send the cue ball to the other half of the table for shape on the 8-ball. 
Fortunately, we're close to a cushion which we can use to propel the cue ball to our position area. In this shot, we're going to use an elevated cue stick and strike the cue ball with left spin. Since the cue stick is elevated, the cue ball hops, then strikes the cushion, and due to all the left spin it has, is sent toward the top side rail and then down table. The key to this shot is to make sure you have enough elevation on your cue stick to make the cue ball slightly hop when it strikes the object ball. Here's a similar situation except this time we need to land around here for shaping the 8 ball. When an object ball is close to the cushion like this 14 ball is, you can shoot the object ball into the cushion here, which will give your cue ball just enough angle to send it toward the top side rail. On this shot we'll be using maximum follow with left spin. The key to this shot is making sure we're using maximum high and sending the object ball into the cushion near the pocket. In this last example, we're playing 8 ball and we ended up straight in on our last stripe and both balls are frozen on the cushion. The problem is that we need to play shape around here for the 8 ball. In order to move the cue ball away from the cushion, we're going to adjust our aim slightly. Instead of aiming straight at the object ball, we're going to aim to strike about 80% of the object ball with a firm stroke. This is going to send the cue ball away from the cushion. This type of shot is much easier than it looks. The key to this shot is learning how much of the object ball you'll need to strike. This next one is one of my favorite shots. It's a pretty powerful shot and it's amazing how you can really kill the cue ball's speed once it strikes with the cushion. In this layout, we're playing 8 ball and we're on our last stripe. The problem is that we have an angle in the 13 ball that will send the cue ball up table even at pocket speed. But if we use a low right spin, we can kill the cue ball's speed off the cushion. And here's why this works. If we look at the angle off the 13 ball, the cue ball's natural path is to go left after striking the cushion. So the right spin would be reverse spin, which causes the cue ball to change direction off the natural path, which helps kill its speed. Also, instead of tracking this way, which limits our position window, the cue ball will track this way off the cushion, which opens up our position area. The key to this shot is to really lock in on striking the cue ball with low right and make sure you accelerate through the cue ball. If you let up on the speed, the cue ball won't have enough low or right spin to keep it within its target area. Here's another example of killing the cue ball's speed off a cushion. In this example, we're playing 8 ball and we have a little too much angle on our last stripe to hold the cue ball for shape on the 8 ball. If we shoot this shot at pocket speed, we may be able to hold the cue ball, but this type of shot is way too delicate and the object ball may roll off missing the pocket. Instead, we're going to shoot with a little more speed using low right. Once you get this type of shot down, you're going to be using it over and over again. It's a great shot that really kills the cue ball's momentum off a cushion. So now we're going to go through three bonus shots. In this shot, we're playing 8 ball and we're hooked on the 8 ball. If your cue ball is on this line, which is from the corner pocket to the third diamond, you can simply aim at this diamond with low spin, and the cue ball should head toward the corner pocket. Even if the cue ball is here, as long as we aim at the third diamond with low spin, the cue ball should head toward the corner pocket. Here's a shot that comes up quite often. In this game of 9 ball, I'm on the 1 ball and I need to play a position for the 2 ball. The problem is that I have a little more angle in the 1 ball than I would have liked. But if I can aim the 1 ball to this part of the pocket with a soft stroke and a touch of right spin, I can hold the cue ball for the 2 ball. Here's another example of ending up with too much angle on my object ball. In this game of 9 ball, I'm on the 2 ball and I need to play a position for the 3 ball. If I shoot this shot with a super soft speed and a touch of left spin, the cue ball should die after striking the object ball. And we're using left spin since it allows us to strike more of the object ball because the left spin will throw the object ball to the right. Here's a great kicking system that you'll be using over and over again. I'll first show you how the system works and then I'm going to show you a game example where this system would come in handy. In this system, we're going to draw a line from the back of the side pocket through the cue ball. And wherever this line ends up on the end rail will be close to where the cue ball will strike the opposite end rail if we shoot toward the back of the side pocket. Now the object ball is about a half diamond further down the rail, which means I can just add a half diamond to my aiming point. 
Now the object ball is here, so if I can send the cue ball to this diamond, I should strike the eight ball. Since my target diamond is one diamond higher, I'll aim one diamond lower, which should send it on the correct path. In this game of 9 ball, I'm hooked on the 1 ball, so I'll first find the path to the back of the side pocket and through the cue ball. I'll then make an educated guess as to what target on the in rail will work for striking the 1 ball. If I can send the cue ball toward this diamond, it should strike the 1 ball. Since this diamond is a half diamond farther down the rail, I'll just add a half diamond to my target on the top side rail. This is a cool shot that does come up every once in a while. In this game of 9 ball, we're straight in on the 1 ball, we need to send the cue ball toward the end rail for shape on the 2 ball. On this shot, we're going to elevate and strike the cue ball with maximum right spin. When the cue ball strikes the 1 ball, the right spin propels it toward the end rail. The key to this shot is to really focus on driving the tip through the cue ball with good acceleration. This shot is easiest when both balls are near a cushion, which makes it easier to use an elevated cue. Here's another example where we're straight in on our object ball. Our position area is around here for the 8 ball. So just like in the previous shot, we're going to elevate our cue stick and strike down on the right side of the cue ball. This should propel the cue ball to the right and toward our position area. As mentioned earlier, you really need to focus on accelerating through the cue ball when performing this shot. This is a great shot that you'll be using over and over again when playing pool. On this shot, we're playing nine ball and we need to play shape for the two ball. The problem is that if we draw the cue ball straight back, we're gonna strike the six ball. And if we use a stun draw shot, which means striking above maximum low, the cue ball heads toward the seven ball. This time I'm gonna elevate the cue stick and strike the cue ball with low spin. Now we see that the cue ball hops just enough to change its path. And now it moves around the six ball and heads toward the side rail. This shot is actually easy to execute once you have it down. This isn't a power shot. If you strike the cue ball correctly with an elevated cue stick, it won't take much to move the cue ball around an obstacle ball. You'll be aiming the object ball to the right part of the corner pocket. Here's a similar situation. In this game of eight ball, we're on our last stripe and we need to draw the cue ball back to the top side rail for shaping the eight ball. If we just use maximum low, our cue ball will strike the seven ball. But if we elevate our cue stick and strike the cue ball below center, it will move the cue ball around our obstacle ball. In this last example, we're playing nine ball. We need to pocket the one ball and play position for the two ball. Just using straight draw, we'll send the cue ball into the eight ball. But if we elevate our cue stick while striking the cue ball with low spin, we can move the cue ball around the 8 ball and toward the side rail for shaping the 2 ball. When training students, one issue that comes up quite often is using low spin when there's an angle on an object ball. More often than not, the student will end up miscuing. In this scenario, we're playing 8 ball and we're on our last stripe. The problem is that we have to pocket the 10 ball with low spin, avoiding the scratch. When students try this shot, they usually tend to miscue. The reason this happens is because if the student is anxious at all about the shot, they may not strike the cue ball where they're aiming. And since they're aiming extremely low in the cue ball, mishitting the cue ball even a little bit will result in a miscue. One trick players can try on shots like this is to aim center on the cue ball and shoot downward on the forward stroke creating backward spin. Since you'll be striking downward from the center of the cue ball, you'll still be getting low spin, but with less risk of a miscue. This shot is for more advanced players who have good control over their stroke. Here's another example where if the player is concerned at all about the scratch in the side pocket, they may miss hit the cue ball, resulting in a miscue. In this situation, we're gonna draw the one ball to the side rail for shape on the eight ball. Once again, we're gonna be aiming center and we're gonna be shooting downward through the cue ball, which gives the cue ball enough draw to miss the pocket. Here's a shot that I present to students that usually results in a miscue or two. 
and the shot would need to draw back to the side rail for shape on the eight ball. But due to the angle on the 13 ball, this is a very precise shot. But once again, we're gonna aim center and shoot downward through the cue ball. The key to the shot is to strike this part of the pocket and accelerate through the cue ball. Here's a shot that's fairly easy to perform, but gets overlooked by players who aren't familiar with it. In this game of nine ball, we need to pocket the three ball and play shape for the four ball, which is near the bottom side rail. The problem is that we don't have a clear path to our position area. So in this shot, we're gonna be using maximum high. The maximum high on the cue ball drives it through the seven ball and toward our position area. The key to this shot is to make sure you're striking the cue ball with maximum high and good acceleration. In this game of nine ball, we need to pocket the two ball and play position for the three ball. The problem is that the nine ball is blocking the cue ball's path. But if we use maximum high, the cue ball would drive through the nine ball, sending it toward the other half of the table. This shot is fairly easy once you get the hang of it. Here's a shot that you'll see top players use quite often. In this game of nine ball, we're on the one ball, we need to play a position for the two ball. The problem is that we have a steep angle on the one ball, and if we softly roll it in, the cue ball will float away. But if we use maximum left spin, we can hold the cue ball for position on the two ball. The reason this works is because we can aim to strike more of the one ball, since the left spin will throw the one ball toward the pocket. By striking more of the one ball, we can reduce the cue ball's momentum. Also, the left spin sends the cue ball toward the side rail, which opens up the position window. Here's another example where this type of shot comes up. In this game of eight ball, we need to pocket our last stripe and hold the cue ball for position on the eight ball. Once again, we're gonna be using maximum left spin so we can strike more of the 14 ball. The key to this shot is learning where to aim while using maximum side spin. Here I've slightly increased my angle on the 14 ball and I'm still able to hold the cue ball for the 8 ball. Now I've increased the angle even more, but I'm still able to hold the cue ball. Here's a great shot that Mike Massey recently discovered while practicing at a friend's house. Okay, here's a situation. I've got one ball almost straight in. I want to get on the two. I do a stun, I go into the three seven. I do a normal draw, I go into the eight. So I'm gonna hop the cue ball a little bit, go forward just like that and try to draw back in between and go up here. So you gotta elevate the cue. Perfect. Now I'll show you how to perform this shot. In this game of eight ball, we're on our last stripe and we need to play a position for the eight ball at this end of the table. The solids are preventing me from just drawing the cue ball back. But if we elevate our cue stick and aim the 14 ball toward this part of the pocket, the cue ball will hop slightly before striking the cushion, which sends it toward the top side rail. This shot works best when both balls are lined up toward the cushion right before the pocket. You'll be striking down on the cue ball and sending the cue ball to this part of the pocket which creates the angle you need to send the cue ball off the end rail. When you first practice this shot, don't try to overpower the shot. This shot requires a nice stroke with good acceleration. In this game of eight ball, I'm on my last solid and I need to land here for shape on the eight ball. So I'll elevate the cue stick and strike the cue ball with low spin. I'll be aiming the two ball to this part of the corner pocket, which will give me the angle I need to send the cue ball off the end rail. 